Hi, Michael here from Go Engineer with another armchair tech tip. And today we want to talk about changing the tips on your Fortis Stratasys system. So I'm thinking that most of you in some cases have said to us in the past, I'm not changing tips because it takes entirely too long. Well, really it doesn't. You know, you should be able to get this down to kind of like handling it in a pit crew fashion. Get in, get out, get onto something else. And that's what we want to show you. This really isn't a big deal. We want to help you understand that. So let's truck back to the machine and show you how this really plays out. Hi, and welcome back to Go Engineers Sewanee, Georgia demo room. We want to walk through the tip change process on the Stratasys high-end systems. Now, the interaction on this screen is going to vary slightly depending on the system you have. Again, generationally, from the 400s to the 450s, even to the 900s, this interaction will be a little bit different. But when we actually get up into the head and interact with that to change the tips, that's going to be the same. So let's just walk through this real quick. All right, so at the system itself, let's walk through how to do a tip change. <clears throat> From the build screen, we're going to go over to the tip icon. And under there, on the far left, is going to be the wizard. Now this wizard is really intuitive. Just walk through and answer the questions. That's the best thing I can tell you right now. Answer the questions. What do you want to do? So as a quick note, when you're on the first screen of the wizard, what do these buttons mean? Because it's not really clear to you. This button right here is your yes. Yes, I'm confirming. I want to do whatever I've selected. Please move me on to the next part. So yes, move me on to the next part. This will cancel the wizard, and this button will take you back a few steps if you want to make a change. You're like, oops, I made a mistake. I want to change that back. Cancel the wizard completely and confirm. Yeah, move me on, let's keep going through the wizard, just so we're clear. Okay, moving on. Well, I wanna stay with the ASA material in this case. Okay, we're gonna arrow to the next screen. I'd like to go from a T16 tip to a T12 tip. Arrow to the next screen. Do you wanna change the supports? Yes, we'd love to change to the 30 support from the 35. I'm doing this simply to show you the load and unload on both materials, not just one. Again, answering the questions, you need to change the tips. That will be the tip we'll put in for the new support material. It's then going to state, ensure that no part is on the platen and that it's going to be moved to a cleaning location. When I say yes to this, what's actually going on? The system is now raising up the build tray and allowing for us to get in and clean it out. It's really imperative that we clean the machine when we're changing material families, meaning if we're gonna go from something in the standard package to the engineering package to the high performance package, that we go in and we remove the build sheet, we empty the purge bucket, we vacuum out the system. Why? Because there's such a significant temperature change from one material family to the next that you will actually melt material in the chamber if we don't clean it out. So it's important to go through these things when you're changing from one family to the next. Staying in ASA to ASA, the emptying or vacuuming isn't as important. But keep in mind, it is critical if you're going up in temperature to another material. Once these are done, arrow over to the next screen. At this point, it's gonna be beginning the unloading process. As you can see, it's gonna take about eight minutes for this to wheel around and begin unloading the ASA and unloading the support so we can actually go in and physically change out the tips. We can't do this until the material has been pulled out of the tip itself. So we'll wait those eight minutes, we'll come back and continue on. So we're gonna follow these steps. Once we're done following these steps of going in, removing the head, changing the tips, putting new tips in, putting the head back in the location, we will then close the hood and move on to the next step. So at this point, the system tells us to open up the hood. We're going to come in here and we're going to find two screws that we're going to loosen up to take the head out. I will show you that in a separate little clip. We loosen up these two screws. You will want to grab the head by the handle and the side. Don't touch the head cable. When you pick this up, 
you're going to just swoop it back so you can avoid the stationary bracket and then place it into the service bracket. Once it's in the service bracket, you will come to the screws that are holding the tips into the liquefiers. You'll want to loosen them up so that you have about an eighth of an inch gap from the base of the head to the liquefier itself. The reason for that is that the tips have a collar. That collar is what holds the tip in place when the liquefier is pinched down. So we will simply grab that tip and pull up on the liquefier to loosen it enough so it'll slide out. I'm setting it in the tray so I won't forget about it. I'll grab the other one, slide it out. One really important note, the liquefiers are always hot. Hence the reason I always interact with the system by using pliers to take something out. These are never cooler than 100 degrees Celsius. So always be sure that when you're taking something out or just being aware of the fact that this region is never cooled off. Important safety note. Now based on the chart that we'll show you in a different video, we'll remind you about the indications on the back of the tips as to which one goes in what location. But you simply slide them back in, lock them into those collars. Now again, you're just gonna wanna snug these screws down. You don't need to over tighten them. The thermal expansion up here is pretty significant, so you don't want to torque these down. They just need to be snugged up. Once they're snugged up, we can grab our head by the handle and on the side, fling it back around past that bracket, drop it into place. The head has two little pins on it, so it's going to fit perfectly into position once it's seated. And now I am going to tighten up the two screws that mount the head into place. Upon tightening up those two screws, I will grab the handle and just push the head back and forth just to verify that it's securely back in place. I'll take my pliers, grab my two tips because they're still going to be a little bit warm. Pull those out, take out my tools, close the hood, and we're done. So we've swapped the tips out. Now at this point, we're going to move on to the next step. This screen is asking that if you keep track of your tip life, when you put in the tips, if they've been used in the past, you can either say, I have 200 cubic inches already run through this tip or they're already at zero. This is to help track how much material is run through your tips so that you'll better know when they might run out as far as their tip life. Moving on to the next screen. Okay, so at this screen, the system is now telling us to install the build sheets, verify the vacuum, put in the canisters, and it's gonna go through the rest of the process of loading the material, running a calibration, which is another video we're gonna share with you, uh, and it'll finish up the process of loading material to change out the tips. So hopefully that gives you a pretty good idea about how to actually go through the process on this system, and on the others up here at least, as far as changing out the tips, and to not be afraid of this. This is something you can do, so please, Get out there and enjoy swapping tips and swapping materials and making the most of your system. Okay, thanks for your time. All right. Well, hopefully after this, you'll be in and out and in and out and in and out, running in, changing tips, going off and doing something else and saying, man, this really isn't a big deal. Thanks, guys. And if that's the case, then we did our job. So please follow us at GoEngineer.com uh, for all applicable links. And like and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for spending some time with us. Have a great day. Bye.